we will have a short uh, panel discussion before starting the panel discussion i will give you the idea of the topic in today's world we are talking about lots of things there are announcements now and then in the newspapers how we have to see india in next 5 to 10 years so there are there is a make in india campaign which was launched teach in india campaign which was launched to see that our global force of youth will be eligible to deliver whatever you are looking for them they should be delivering the services they should be uh, a pool of talent we can look for the solutions but if you look at the engineers which are passing out of this uh, engineering colleges one of the reports says that 34% of the engineers do not fit the job they are not eligible to perform even a single job function in, in into their careers so that that is something terrific we lack the skills in the students once they pass out from the classrooms they they can't survive in the outside environment so this is the issue where which we have to give attention and to discuss how as a teacher how as a schools we can address this uh gap of the employability i would first like to hear uh, the opinions of the uh, panelists from their own perspectives so i am not throwing any questions straight away with you so i will be keeping it open because you have you are working uh, in your respective schools and you have seen a lots of changes in the schools so uh, i will ask you to uh, present the topic uh on of three uh, separate perspectives that how can we respond to improve the youth employability and look at the path towards the future so may i start with the only uh, one male member from the panel uh, arunav singh thank you thank you very much uh, dr engle uh, namaskar mumbai Girish, uh, Girish has uh, asked us. Uh, it's a pertinent question. That what do we do to improve the employability of this youth? Because we are eventually sending people to the job world. But there is a catch to your question. We are not getting to send these students directly to the job world. There is a college in the middle. and that college is not considering the skills that we are developing in the child that college is only considering the mark sheet that we send with the child so when this child goes through grade 12 or is only yesterday the iit uh, je mains results were announced and uh, schools are today competing with one other of how many students of their schools have qualified to iit mains and then they would eventually go to how many got through the advanced and how many got through medical colleges so there is a slight dichotomy that we currently have in the system in in the policy level and i, I don't know if it is just me as a school leader or but you would also feel similar thoughts that uh, there there is a dichotomy i have to send out a mark sheet so i can't deny that at the same time uh, i know that if i'm still just sending this child out for that mark sheet this child is of no use if i have not been able to skill the student and what can i do to actually make this child more job ready i would actually go back to what you mentioned in your opening remarks about reflection and the fact that even this exercise is an exercise of reflection we we don't reflect we go from one academic year to the next academic year to the next academic year teaching the same thing in the same manner over and over and over again in fact there are some concepts that we are teaching that we learned in school in the exact same manner as we learned them 
That's where the bigger challenge is. Uh, I remember some 15 years back, there was a professor who was talking to me about uh, teacher development. The student development is not going to happen till the time teacher development happens. So this man had taught us for three months on teacher development. And in his last class, he says, experience is irrelevant. You're like, no, 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 no. Experience is very relevant. Once I get experience on doing something, I do it well. So he said, experience is irrelevant. And then he took a long pause. While we're looking at his face, you are going to say something to complete this. And then he says, reflecting on experience is relevant. Otherwise, you could have just made the same mistake for 20 years. And now you have 20 years of experience of making that mistake. Or you could have done it one day and the next day you are a better practitioner. The, ch the changing scenario that we are getting to lead schools in or the scenario in which we are getting to train these children to prepare for their future, skilling them up is the only real one thing that we can do. We can't predict their future. Nobody sitting in this room can predict how this world will be five years from now. And in five years from now, only your grade 12 would have reached the job world. The child in nursery is going to hit that job world in two decades. If we close our eyes for a second and go back 20 years, none of you had a smartphone. When you did not understand something, your, your parents said, go ask your teacher. Now those same parents say, Google it. And it is now changing faster. So I, I would have to you know, pin my hope on being able to skill the student. But the student is not getting skilled till the time the teacher is not getting skilled. So Connecting Classrooms 3 theme could not have been more relevant to the world that we are getting to live in. And uh, I especially like how you sensitize both the principal and the teacher on the same day. So the one who has to do it also gets to know it, and the one who has to get it done also gets to know it. So uh, kudos to British Council team, kudos to this idea, and hope we can skill our students better. I have totally misused my opportunity of speaking first. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Arunab. You have uh, touched upon the pertinent points of this gap between the schooling and the college, but you have irritated the fact that teaching uh, and learning while teaching is most important and we have to see the future and we have to develop ourselves to address that future needs. Thanks a lot. May I request Vandana ma'am to please? So good morning everyone and it's a, a pleasure to see you all this morning and I think uh, Arna very uh, wonderfully put up the point of uh, the gap in the uh, education systems. However, I think uh, the onus lies on uh, schools, onus lies on the teaching fraternity to begin somewhere. So my only question to the audience is, when do you think you want to start developing skills? At what age? Any answers? Primary? Pre-primary? First day of school? Excellent. And I think skills can start from the time when you conceive <laughs> in the womb. And it's true. When I was expecting, I would read to my child. And I think the first skill that you would see the child develops in the womb, there's a lot of research on how the developmental milestones are developed of the students, of the children at various phases. I'm sure we all know those milestones. So I'm happy to hear that people understand that it has to start from school. And how do we embed it, integrate it into the curriculum? It's not something separate. So I think the first thing I would say that 
the head of the school, the first job profile for a head of a school is to have the right curriculum. The governing body or the trustee gives you an infrastructure, then he puts the people in place. So the first thing is to clearly define the standards of the curriculum, which should have definitely knowledge, which is important, skills, concepts, which is very, very important, which people don't realize. So when I say uh, knowledge, I know that content is something which we are very good at. However, what we really lack is skills. So I would think that if you have to develop skills, it has to be from there, communication skills, social skills, which are the most important skills. If I'm not able to socialize, I can't communicate. If I'm not able to communicate, I'm not confident. So very, very important for us to develop, like British Council has very wonderfully put down the skills, creativity, imagination, critical thinking, digital technology, digital uh, skills, research skills. I think they have to be embedded in the curriculum. And like Arnab very correctly said, it's the technique, pedagogy. It's not about what to teach. It's not about the content. It is about how do you teach? How do you cater to the needs of the children? And how do you develop those skills in those children? And I think that's the biggest area which is lacking to develop the skills. And I'm glad that British Council has this training program based on the very fact when you talked about open-ended question, close-ended question, different perspectives, non-routine and routine problems in your training uh, books. It's a different teaching technique. And I think that's the key to develop skills and develop this country. Thank you, Vandama, ma'am. You rightly pointed out that the knowledge is essential along with the skills. We should not go away with the knowledge. We have to combine the knowledge and skills in a proper manner so that we can achieve both the things. You also rightly said that it should start from the beginning and it, the beginning is the school. Uh, if we look back, we do not bother about why I don't remember quadratic formula. We will say, why my teacher didn't teach me something about making presentations? Yeah, something different, the social skills, socialization skills. So where, ma'am, our school's responsibility comes to also teach them the other skills, or life skills, which they will need in the other life. Now may I request Sangeeta, ma'am, to please? I'm going to request. Good morning. I'm going to request Girish to please repeat your question. Uh, how uh, schools can contribute to enhance the employability of the students in their schools? So uh, since you are the education expert, so you can talk through your perspective. I free, can, free. Uh, thank you. I can speak through my experience uh, of supporting schools. I realize that while we're trying to integrate into the curriculum, and like Dr. Lula rightly said, that we need a very uh, robust and a comprehensive curriculum. And for that curriculum planning to happen, I am uh, seeing that the leader of the school, along with the team of teachers, near, actually needs to have a, a complete research cell because it's something that we need to look at. How do I integrate core skills into the core subjects? Like uh, Arunab said that I need to make sure as a school that my children get their scores. And at the same time, I want to make sure that they have the skills that are required for employability. I see those skills translating themselves not only to the core subjects, but I also see them in action when the core curricular subject teaching is on. So uh, for me as an educator, I'm trying to look at how can I map it to the core skills, embed it into the core subjects, and extrapolate it to the co-curricular subjects. And um, 
then take it uh, forward. So before I even kind of start implementing an action plan, I am looking at how can my teachers, all of them sitting here, be researchers, and they have to do a lot of studying and research to kind of really prepare this complete matrix, which would be, uh, uh, you know, something that you can really apply. And when you're all in it together, then I think the energy in the school uh, would be such that everybody is continually learning. And when you create that learning environment, uh, I think that's where the students will also kind of, you know, kind of uh, get that inspiration to skill themselves. I also uh, have one more uh, addition to make here, that we're talking about knowledge, we're talking about skills. I'm also concerned about the behavior. So how do I get the child to make sure, or even adults, that if I have uh, knowledge in an area, I have the skill in that particular area, I also need to have behavior that matches that knowledge and skill. And therefore, the challenge for, uh, for us is how do I kind of, you know, make sure all of these things are happening? And only then can I look at a competent young generation. Uh, so the challenges are great, but I think uh, we have a fantastic opportunity here uh, all of us definitely who are part of the core skill program to do this research and kind of develop this um, dynamic curriculum uh, plan for the next academic year. So are you with me on this? Yeah? All right. Waiting for teacher researchers to enlist with Dr. Girish Ingray. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, it, it, <laughs> it reflects the researcher within you and uh, how your means connecting the policy, practices, curriculum issues, and um, joining the dots so that we can improve as a teacher in our classrooms. Thanks a lot. Motion Vajji is up to you. Well, a very good morning. Uh, and Mumbai is very, very warm. Not warm as for climate, but as for the people. So everybody, the entire Mumbai team, and I've always felt the warmth. Uh, thank you so much. And, and you know, when you're the last speaker, already everything has been said. So it's very difficult to, you know, again, rethink what you've thought. But coming, first of all, I think I have to thank British Council because uh, last July when we were doing this training and didn't have much clue into how this is going to be embedded in schools, the core skills, why do we need it? We were doing very well, fine. But as we've come along and as I've been into this training as well as looking at the reflections of teachers, I think that it was the right thing at the right time because we are talking about the 21st century kid. And as Arunav said, we really don't know about what 20 years hence the child's going to face. If we look at a little bit of statistics, I'll just tell you that there's going to be about 3 million people moving from the rural area to the urban and semi-urban. So what, what do we need then? What do our children need to do? Is it that only we are training our city-bred schools? What about the other children who are going to move? When somebody is sitting for the JE, as Arunav said, they're not only from the cities, they're from all over. Are we embedding these skills for them? Is it that the skills we are talking about only needs to be where employability, entire India needs to be employed? We still have so many unemployed. There are about 1.3 million students who don't get job. We have more electrical engineers than electricians. We have more mechanical engineers than carpenters. Now, where are we heading for? We all want engineers. I think with core skills, what is very important is vocational training to be embedded into a school curriculum. If we look at other schools, other countries where vocational training is a part, India will feature at the bottom with 8% only. Korea with 96%, Japan 85%, Germany 86%, Canada 88%, Mexico 25%. It's just a few glimpses which I would like to then. How do we design a curriculum? Do we need them? We need to change the mindset. CBSE has introduced vocational, 
but we are not actually taking it as a subject. We think that what will a child do doing vocational? But if we just go outside and see that we'll need all this, if there's going to be so many people coming into the urban and semi-urban areas, we have to have jobs for them. We're talking about employability. How are we going to employ them? How many places are engineers going to be in? What, and we don't know, again, as uh, Arunav said, that smartphones were not there. So um, uh, something more advanced will come in. Are we equipping them? We talk about creativity because that's very important. We teach them how to think, not what to think. Because if they know a situation which will come, how to deal with it. When we are talking about people getting employed, we are talking about stress tolerance. We are talking about interpersonal sensitivity and patience. Along with all the skills, we need to embed values, values which are slowly disintegrating from the society. So I think teachers have a lot of role to play in bringing these children to be employable, not only with skills, but also with moral values. Thank you so much. Thank you, Moshmi, ma'am. You have rightly said uh, there is a need of policy level reforms of introducing the vocational training education into our schools. If you look at the data, about 9.3 million students will be graduating of 12 standard, Pell grades. And out of those, only 4.5 million will be going to higher education. And those who are going for higher education, I don't know how many of them will be employable. Only 22, means the data says only 25 to 20 percent of them will be employable out of 4.5 million. So what are we creating? Do we need to look at our system? Do we look, need to have a reforms? So definitely uh, this is the call for policy level people. But if we talk at different levels and different forums, this voice will get heard at policy level and they might think of changing the policy. That's how it works. Thanks a lot, Moshe um, ma'am. Now I will come to uh, Arunav Singh again. As he's an innovative management director in his school, I would like to ask him, you talked about mark sheets also, how to, we, we can't get away of the mark sheet, we can't get rid of that, but how can we strike the balance between mark sheet and skills? So how do we strike the balance between mark sheet and skills? And is there a balance between mark sheets and skills? Um, I think the answer to that is yes, it's slightly more complicated. Um, because you have to then deconstruct your school as um, different units and need to have different goals for them. Uh, Dr. Ullah talked about uh, how at conception state we start to uh, you know, learn and we have Abhimanyu as an example from our uh, you know, previous past uh, literature. While at the same time, even in the United States, they're now doing research and they have a university for expectant mothers. So there is a big belief that uh, this learning is uh, starting early. Uh, what we uh, as a school find ourselves doing is uh, from the pre-nursery all the way to grade 10, there is much more focus, there are skill clubs, uh, and uh, there is a lot of time devoted towards uh, skill, 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 skill. Also because CCE, the continuous and comprehensive evaluation has now given us that opportunity where we tell the parent this project work is important and while in the previous system, the parent would have said, no, 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 my child has board exams. Now we tell the child, yes, this is part of your child's board exams. So in that right, the policy has actually come in to help with skill development. But this is a choice that the school leader makes every day. That will I do this skill enablement in the true spirit or am I going to get a software that is going to feed all the uh, columns and you know put in all that data so I don't have to do anything. And there are both examples that are currently existing. So from pre-nursery to grade 10 we focus a lot of uh, time and energy on skilling. Come grade 11 and 12, we are your very stringent, academic oriented school and uh, some students get frustrated that you know this was a very different school in grade 10 
This is a very different school in grade 11. But I, I know that that is probably the only balance I'm able to strike because they have to get to a good college to use those skills. Today, uh, I read this uh, cartoon in a newspaper that um, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg are both college dropouts, but they dropped out of Harvard. <laughs> so, so they got there. So one of the responsibilities that we have as uh, school leaders is to get these uh, students to get to the next level as well. I think that's what our balance would be. Thank you. Thanks, Arunab. That is a perfect strategic advice uh, given by a practitioner, I can see. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, may I request uh, Dr. Bandhanullah to just respond to uh, one of my questions. I was just thinking that you are an uh, experienced uh, educationist in the system for more than 20 years now, and you are not only looking at one system of uh, curriculum, you have different uh, curriculums, IB and others, and you have been directing all these curriculum faculties to uh, do something in their classrooms and your international exposure also. But looking at the average uh, class boards and resources we have, uh, what kind of ad advice will you give to the practitioner teachers that how can they uh, mold the curriculum and uh, how can they bring about, means you can, can you please provide uh, one model of bridging all these curriculums and putting forward a best, one best practice to, do, uh, to add to the skills? Uh, thank you, Girish, for that lovely long question. And uh, I think it's a very good question. Uh, how do you compare? Uh, I definitely am very fortunate to be having uh, taught in a local state curriculum and then move on to the ICSC, the CBSE, the IB, and the Cambridge and being an examiner. And I think that uh, the uh, major aspect of the difference between the local, that's the state curriculum, the national, and the international curriculum. Uh, the major difference is the, the whole teaching learning technique is student-centric, and the onus lies more on the child. And we use a very uh, innovative technique if you read on, I can talk for days and hours together, but I'll just give you the gist. If you read on Kate Mudok's inquiry cycle, and here, right from preschool to primary school, there is something like the questions are put up every morning to the teacher, okay? The student is given an opportunity to find out the uh, content or the matter and then problem solve it for himself. So for example, I'll just give you a small example. Even if you're teaching soluble and insoluble or you're teaching absorption in class, uh, usually we would stand there and teach and you know convey the content. However, the learning has not really taken place because if I just ask you a question now, right from last half an hour, what everybody's talking, I'm sure half of you won't remember because you're not involved. But if I ask you, what's the question that I asked you all? You all will remember, right? When should we start skill development? Because you were involved. So the same topic is that they would give a lot of, uh, you know, uh, there would be salt and there'll be water and there'll be a lot of things, chalk and stick and everything. They'll ask the child to predict what will happen if you do this. Okay, it starts from there. Then now you investigate, now you find out, now you conclude. So you would find that they allow the children to think. And my only one suggestion to the teaching fraternity is to allow the children to challenge, to think, to question. And I would say in short, let go your power. Because we as teachers are so good with content, we enter the class, tuck, 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 tuck. 
we don't bother english teacher comes in content 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 maths comes in content so what is really happening that the child is listening to eight different people there are eight lectures or seven lectures in a day so i think that the moment you allow the child engage the child make him an independent learner then you're going to automatically create those future students who can find things for themselves they are not dependent like arnab said in the beginning and everybody is talking about we don't know what kind of jobs are going to come up in the days to come so we need to prepare them we don't need to spoon feed them and let me tell you they are beyond the intellectual level that all of us in this room have and i can give you i feel small when i enter a grade 1 pyp classroom the questions that the children have for the teacher why do you burp the teacher was teaching was not teaching they were finding out questions on digestive system and the teacher just looked and she said okay now let's find out okay so you would see that let the students voice create leaders and i think british council is talking about student leadership student are the best leaders in the class students voice give them they are much beyond anybody's imagination because they don't need you and me they have the whole everything is there on this little phone right even if you are in the most remote place and you have 100 students in a class he or she knows knowledge and content is all there so how do you create a challenge in the class and how do you make them think my only message to teachers is allow an opportunity for children to think become independent and responsible students in the class then in the world we know from days to get now there's going to be a water war there's going to be a war for water are we preparing them will they be able to solve that problem no because we have only taught them what is what is the content we have not told them we have not taught them to think critically to be able to take decisions in the days to come to be able to solve problems because we have not allowed them to think we have not really given them that opportunity so we we actually stop them from developing if you've read and if you have done research you will know that there are neurons in our brains the more we use them they multiply and they are able to think and believe me every morning i challenge myself i have a flight today at 8 and everybody told me you knew that there's reflections how did you take that i said i want to challenge myself only then i will think of solutions but if i sit in my comfort zone i can easily sit in the four walls of my school and not go and not challenge but if i want to develop my neurons i want to make sure i build on them i want to challenge myself i'll be able to solve problems better problem solving is a biggest problem today in classrooms which is not developed unfortunately i can see some smiles there thank you Yeah. thank you ma'am uh, yeah it is very important advice from dr lula to let go yourself learn from students and it is a mutual process of learning and teaching it is not a person who is content control who is controlling the content but it is the content is available everywhere and you have to facilitate it how good you become a facilitator it is the most important thing thanks a lot my request uh, sangeeta gole ma'am to just uh, tell the audience since you have worked in the government sector as well uh, how it is relevant and how if government if it is if you think if government can do uh, the things in the classrooms in the course embedding the course skills what teachings uh, you can tell from this government uh, government project to the private sector thank you uh, girish for asking me that question because i was dying to kind of you know uh, uh, kind of say things that the state schools are doing 
and uh, when I'm when we are all studying as educators, we look at all the curriculum uh, frameworks, whether it's an IB or it's a, a state board or a CBSC, and everybody is uh, more or less following the dictates of the national curriculum framework or the national education policy. So when we looked at what is happening with the government schools, especially I can say about Maharashtra. Um, in the last two or three years, and uh, Mr. Kulkarni would be able to support me and the others, there's been a lot of uh, training which is happening uh, with the headmasters and with the teachers parallelly along with the British Council programs also. All right. So uh, when we are doing the training as facilitators, we also uh, keep abreast of what it is that they have done. So that our starting point or our point of moving the headmasters and teachers has been uh, connecting those lines for them. So we found that they have done a lot of training on constructivism. And that's where we are giving the children an opportunity to build uh, knowledge, to construct their own knowledge. And that's the opportunity where the children are going to question. So if I am going to look at a ratio of headmasters and the teachers, headmasters who we train for leadership, because they're going to lead the teachers in developing such a curriculum. And if we look at the teachers who we train with core skills, I think I can say with confidence that at least 45% of those teachers, and maybe uh, you want to add and say more of them, 45% of the teachers in the uh, remotest of uh, areas in Maharashtra were very, very creative themselves, and they were critical thinkers. They are very uh, rooted to the, uh, uh, to the context in what they're living. So their problem-solving skills are also there. The system is not allowing them or they have prevented themselves from coming up with solutions to the problems. But the training that we gave them kind of inspired them to look at solutions for um, problems that they're facing within their school context and even within how to involve the local community and uh, work in collaboration to get the children to start developing their, their skills. So what I see through this training is that the headmasters have started working on themselves. They said, you know, when they went back, they gave each one of us an assurance. Ami kahi tari nakki karnar. Tumi eudha you know, I'm using the language because that's the passion. You have given us so much in these five days plus three days that we will not let you down. And we know what we need to do and we will do it. You know, and so we uh, uh, kind of we really think that we need a reflection session with all of those teachers and the headmasters who we put in a lot of effort and uh, passion and emotion when we, you know, kind of connected with them. And I think that they have the, you know, uh, basic uh, within them. The intent is there. And we need to kind of just bring them back together for, for it to, uh, you know, blossom further. And there are a lot of them who are connecting with us, and I can say that I'm connecting this to the assessment that we did. I have some of the facilitators. We prepared 140 assessors for the state, and the state has adopted the NUPA standard of Shala Siddhi to assess schools, government schools in Maharashtra. They did a pilot project with 72 schools. Now these 140 assessors were all on a WhatsApp group all of them who assess these 72 schools. And many of these 72 schools have taken training with the British Council and other uh, government training. And the kind of work that's happening in these 72 Zilla Parishad school, I think is phenomenal. So I think there is a lot of hope at the grassroots level. And uh, I'm inspired to work with them uh, even more. Thank you. Thanks a lot, ma'am. It's a really wonderful uh, experience you had and I hope it, if uh, the, the government teachers can do so well, 45%, we should almost do 110% here. <laughs> because the resources, they t do not have anything. If you call uh, resources, then you have to find out what the resources mean by. Secondly, uh, these trainers, uh, sorry, uh, these teachers in government sectors, there is a huge debate whether they are victim or they are villain. Few found them as a villain because they don't do anything, they don't do this, they don't do that. But are they a victim of systems? That is also a debate. They have to 
fill the census register, they have to fill the maternity register, they have to fill n number of registers. Their entire month of May will be uh, gone in the same thing in filling up the different registers. So there is a huge debate of victim and villain, but instead of that, they are doing so well, and I think this uh, whole credit goes to our trainers, those who were tirelessly doing the great job into the fields. Thanks a lot. Uh, we don't have much time, still I'm taking a, uh, I'm asking you one more question, sir, and after that we will close this session. Uh, most of you, ma'am, you are from uh, East India, and uh, geographically and politically, socially, uh, Northeastern East is little bit neglected if there are so less opportunities in the state. Uh, in, in that view, how teachers take the different kinds of training like core skills into the classrooms? Is there a difference? You have seen the reflection session interacted with other teachers also. Can you please share some insight from how uh, the schools work there and I mean, how in, in, in relation with the core skills? Thank you, Ma Girish. Yes, uh, if you're talking about Northeast, uh, that is Assam and uh, Arunachal, and I've been there two years in Guwahati, so I can tell you about Shillong teachers. They have a lot of creativity. I have not seen that kind of creativity in Bengal. They have a lot of creativity, they have a lot of eagerness to learn, but somehow the you know, the way India is progressing, it doesn't reach them. You know, their uh, distance, ability to come, because if we are having any kind of program, it's in Guwahati. So people from Arunachal, from Mizoram, from Sikkim, they all have to come to Guwahati. So it is not always feasible. But the children over there, I'm yet to come across such creative children. They are fantastic. In Music, they are, everybody is so musical. Their work, their ability to adapt anything which you give. Because since I was from Kolkata and when I went to Guwahati, I saw this. And they are ready to adapt to all this. And in Kolkata, I feel that when I saw the reflections in Delhi and Kolkata, and I'm not prejudiced, I thought Delhi was better. Because somewhere they need to come out more, you know, uh, in... Uh, parts of Bengal, when I do teachers training with others, teachers are willing to learn. But I think policies are something, because the first instance you get of a creative teacher or the t um, teaching learning process is through question papers. As uh, I think all of us said that children learn from worksheets and question paper from the pre-primary. As Dr. Lulla said, the learning, the best learning time is zero to seven years, right ma'am? And that's when everything gets into the child. The anxiety, the pleasures, the happiness, so and that actually reflects later. So if your question papers are, you know, made differently, if you're even a simple classwork, we just give, differentiate between rotation and revolution. What is the difference between living and non-living? Where are we even imbibing critical thinking? Where are we even trying to give them a problem? Through question paper, I think teachers, children will learn. And I think core skills is really, really uh, helping because when we are integrating all the subjects, you know, we can place this like with history and English, art, right, ma'am? And children are really adaptable. And I think core skills is something which all India Pan India, we should reach out to all the corners for India to even evolve more. Thank you. Thanks a lot, ma'am. So to sum up today's discussion, it was a really, really interesting discussion. We had different perspectives from practitioner's perspective, from policy perspective, from pedagogy perspectives. So I think you have a lot to take back from this final discussion. So in a word, if I, in a one word, if I uh, summarize this uh, discussion, we have reconfirmed the significance of the old of an old proverb, strike while the iron is hot. That's what uh, Dr. Lula said. We have become aware again at the opening of 21st century that the world is facing a challenge of developing human resources into layers of tomorrow. So we must strike the iron while it is hot. But how and what? And how you will be taking these panel discussions, uh, feedbacks, 
into your schools and how you can develop and how you can start to develop the core skills and embedding into the classrooms. That's what we, are, we have to look at individual level. So it will be a collective kind of campaign of embedding core skills into the curriculum and classrooms. Thanks a lot for our patience listening. If you have any questions, we can address to the panel, but not more than two questions. So I'm glad that our panel members were able to uh, solve all their uh, doubts and they do not have any questions now. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thanks a lot, Aruna.